Okay, so in uh, 12.4, we're still looking at series. Now we're, we're getting into the point where we really just want to determine if series converge or diverge. I guess we sort of did that with the integral test, uh, but we're going to do even more of that now, and we're going to be less concerned about actually finding the value uh, of the sum. We just want to know that it exists. And so I'm just going to write down the direct comparison test first. You'll also see this called the ordinary comparison test. Um, and so just use those names interchangeably here. So suppose that you have two series. So you just have two series with positive terms. And again, I'm ignoring the bounds here, but we assume those bounds are the same. We go from 1 to infinity or 10 to infinity, whatever. Uh, okay, and then we we'll have two different pieces to this direct comparison test. So let's assume this and let's assume and um, a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n for all n. to the side here for a second. So if a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n, right, then it makes sense that the sum of the a sub n's will be less than or equal to the sum of the b sub n's. Does that make sense? And so for each finite, you know, for each s sub n on each side, the, the partial sums, that'll definitely be true. And so if you take the limit, that stays true. Okay? So now we want to conclude stuff. So what if I know that this series converges? Right? That means that I can add up the a sub n's, I get a finite number. Does that tell me anything about the b sub n's? They're bigger than the a sub n's, right? So they could be huge. They might go off to infinity even though this converges. So that doesn't tell me anything, but what if I know that some of the b sub n's converges? So then that also has to convert, right? Because it's smaller than that. Everything's positive, and so the only way it converges is that, right? These are always that when everything's positive, you always have an increasing set of partial sums, right? And so if this is finite, that means you have an increasing set of partial sums that's bounded. And so by that earlier theorem on, on series, you'll you'll get that. So that's our first one. So if the sum of the B sub n's converges. then the sum of the a sub n's okay. And then the other side of the problem, so now if we have divergence, so if b, if the sum of the b sub n's diverge, just like we were saying before, that doesn't mean the a sub n's converge, right? They're, all we know is they're smaller. But if the a sub n's diverge, the a sub n's are smaller than the b sub n's. If that sum is infinite, it'll force the b sub n sum to be infinite as well. Right? So if the small sum diverges, then the larger sum also diverges. Does that make sense? All right, and so the point here is you're going to compare a series to a series that you already know something about. And so before we do any examples, let me just remind us of the series we know converge or diverge. So let me just, I'll just do this a shorthand for it. So the geometric series. What was the condition? Geometric series converge when what's true about R? This double. When it's less than one in absolute value, right? So when, and then it diverges everywhere else, right? So we had that a couple of sections ago, and then we also had the P series. Right? And we said the sum of one over n to the P converges. 
to know if P is greater than 1, right? So again, they diverge if that's not true, they converge if that's true. And so when we talk about using a comparison test, those are the things we're going to compare to, right? We know these things. These are kind of our base series that we're going to compare everything to. And so this first version of the comparison test, this direct comparison test, is a little bit limited in where we can use it, but it'll get it'll become more useful in, in, in a variant of it. This limit comparison test will be very useful. But let's try this first. So example, determine if the following converge or diverge. And I won't say it, but here, I'm, let's, you, we're going to use this direct comparison test. Okay? And so, Let me just come off to the side. I'll go below it next time. So this can be done in your head, but what you want to do, right, as n gets really big, so I mean, say n's a billion, then you raise n to the fifth, that's a billion to the fifth. That's a massive number, right? And then you add three times a billion to it. Well, by the time you've raised it to the fifth power, that three billion looks tiny, right? It, it's barely doing anything. And so the point is, when n gets really large, this guy's just going to act like 1 over n to the fifth. Does that make sense? So, and even if it was minus, it doesn't matter. The point is, your biggest term will dominate the whole behavior as you get big. And so this is the function we want to compare with. Does that make sense? Or the series we want to compare with. And so these ones are set up nicely to do that. So the, right, we want to, so what do we think? If it behaves like 1 over n to the fifth, the sum of 1 over n to the fifth does what? Converge. Converges, because it's a p-series, right? And so then we should be concluding that this also converges. Okay, so if we want to use that theorem, we know the sum over sum of 1 over n to the fifth converges, so that's going to be your b sub n, right? So we want to show that this thing's smaller than that thing in order to apply that theorem. So I'm going to write this, I'm going to say. The sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fifth converges. And what I'd like you to do here is give me some evidence to, as to why that's true. And uh, the evidence is really just something like this. It's a p-series with p equal to 5. Does that make sense? So you just jot down your, your reasoning for that. And well, is this true? Here's what we'd like to be true. Is that a true statement? Is 1 over n to the fifth plus 3n less than or equal to 1 over n to the fifth? Yes. Yeah, this one you just added extra stuff in the denominator, right? So you have n to the fifth. If you add more in the denominator, it gets smaller. And so that's true, right? And you'll see there's the big limitation, right? If that inequality isn't obvious, then this problem becomes a pain to try to use the direct. Comparison test, but in this case, everything works out nicely, and so now we can conclude. And so the sum, so the sum of the big one, the one over in the fifth, converge. It forces the sum of the small one to meet So, so the sum of one over n to the fifth plus three n. Again, we can ignore bounds. It doesn't really matter that they start at one or where they go to. Uh, but this converges by the. comparison does that make sense all right let's try one more here oh I erased I'm sure you've memorized that test by now All right. 
So this is one where this limit comparison test that I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is really the more valuable test, is not going to be as useful. We really probably need to do some version of the ordinary comparison test here. So, right, so 1 over n is a p-series, right? The sum of 1 over n with p equal to 1, and so that diverges. That's the harmonic series, right? This isn't quite that because it's got an extra log in it. But what does log do as you go off to infinity? It just goes to 2. Now, log, as you go to infinity, right, it builds. I mean, this whole thing will go to 0. Is that what you're saying? So this, this will go to zero, but just the log up top will go to infinity, right? Yeah. And so the point is that's actually bigger than the harmonic series. And so all you have to do in this one is say natural log of n over n is greater than or equal to 1 over n. That's not quite true, though, right? What, when n is 1, what's, what's this left-hand side? Zero, right? That's not bigger than 1. When n is 2, log of 2 is less than 1 still, right? Because log of e is 1, and so it's, it's still less than 1. So this isn't true, but it's eventually true, right? That's all we care about is that that's eventually true. And I'm just going to say 4 n greater than or equal to 3. Is that okay? And so as long as you eventually get that behavior, then you're in good shape. So now, this is our small series, and we know it diverges, right? So that's true. And this diverges. And what's our reasoning for why that diverges? So just like I did over there, yeah. you could say it's the a p series with p equal to 1. Or what series is this again? 1 over n, that's the harmonic series, right? And so you say it diverges and then give some evidence. Okay. So again, you get a small series, a smaller series that diverges, so it forces the bigger series to diverge as well. Therefore, the sum of the log n over n diverges. The direct comparison test. That makes sense? Okay. And so that's going to be useful sometimes, but for the most part, we're going to use the following test. Um, well, we feel confident. Remember this geometric series? Which ones converge and which P series converge? Because we're going to keep referring to those for the rest of today. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so limit comparison test. Let me state the test and then we'll kind of give a brief explanation of why that makes sense. So again, same setup as before. Suppose that You got two series, a sub n's and, and b sub n's, and they're both positive. Um, a positive series. Okay. And the limit as n goes to infinity, and I'll show you what. n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n equals l, okay, um, which is finite and non-zero. Okay, so if you get a limit that's a finite non-zero number, um, then they both then a sub n and b sub n both converge or both diverge. They have the same behavior. And again, without going through a full-blown proof of it, essentially this is what happens, right? So if 
limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n equals L, then for large n, a sub n over b sub n is basically L, right? It's not exactly L, but it's close enough. It's right around L. And so that means that the a sub n is basically L times b sub n. Does that make sense? And so the sum is basically the sum of this. And again, you can pull out the L if it converges, right? And so you'll get convergence or divergence of both of them because of that. Does that make sense? And so the idea is we're going to be given a function or a, a sequence a sub n. We'll come up with a sequence or a, a series of b sub n's that we think behaves like that one. And then we'll show that this limit is non-zero, finite number. And then we'll know whether that one converges or diverge. Again, it'll be a p series or a geometric series, and then we can make the right conclusion for the other thing. So let's try this. And again, this is probably well, the test. Of all the tests we've seen so far, this is the one you're going to use the most. The ratio test will be even more useful, but for now, uh, this will be the most, um, most useful one we've seen. So, all right. again, lazy direction. Does this converge or diverge? Let me just show you some examples. All right, let's start off with one that's really, uh, actually, let's, let's start at five here. <clears throat> All right, now, you could get away with this using the um, ordinary comparison tests or the direct comparison test, you just have to be slightly clever in the way you, you write things out. Because what, what is this series? When you plug in 5, you get 1 half. When you plug in 6, you get 1 third. You plug in 7, 1 fourth. So it's 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth. Well, that's the end of the harmonic series, right? It's a harmonic series without the first term. But if the harmonic series diverges, this has to diverge as well. But, I mean, this is just a much more convenient way to, to find it. So all we're going to say is, as n gets big, what's this going to behave like? 1 over n, right? If n's a billion, a billion minus 3 is close enough to a billion, right? And so it's going to behave like that. Now, if, if we wanted to use, so, the sum of the 1 sub n's, does it converge or diverge? It diverges, right? And so. Oh, I picked the wrong one here. I wanted to do this. Let's do this. Switch it. So the sums of this, so it doesn't change that behavior, right? It still behaves like 1 over n. This thing diverges. And so if we were going to use the ordinary comparison test, we'd want the 1 sub n to be the smaller one, right? But is that true? Is 1 over n less than? No, that's not true, right? And so you can't use the ordinary comparison test in just the sort of classic way that we used it before, or the direct comparison test. And so that's why this test is so much more useful. Because all you have to do is say, this guy acts like this, right? And now, so this is my, these are my a sub n's here. These will be my b sub n's, right? And now I'll apply this theorem. So I'll take the limit of the series I was given divided by the series I want to compare it to. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 3 over 1 over n. If you've done this correctly, you get 1 almost every time um, if you've picked the right way. But what is this? So dividing by 1 over n is the same as multiplying by n, right? n over 1. So the whole thing becomes n over n plus 3. And that limit is 1, right? And I think now we've seen enough of these that if you get you know, the same power in the numerator and the denominator, now you can just say that limits that ratio. Right? So it's 1 over 1, your biggest power. And the 1 into the 1 is how you just get 1. Does that make sense? And so what I'd like you to do is make it clear. You realize I have a finite number and it's non-zero. So do this, say that's not zero, right? So now it shows you're recognizing what conditions need to be met. Okay, so I get that limit, it's not zero, and 
the sum of 1 over n does what? Converge or diverge? Diverge. Why? Gradually getting bigger. Uh, well, it, I mean, it does get bigger, but what's the, so it's the only the, everything in here should be geometric or p series or harmonic series, and so in this case, harmonic series. Um, those should be always your description. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's other ways you could argue something, but those are kind of the, the key things we're going to fall back on. We know when geometric series converge or diverge. Uh, we know when harmonic series converge or diverge. Okay, so then we're almost done, right? What do we have to do? Right, so now, we, so now we've shown everything here, right? We've shown this is that non-zero limit. We know this guy diverges, and so we conclude that the Oh, I guess we did it the other way. We know this diverges, so we conclude that the other series diverges. And so our series that we were asked about, and so the sum from five to infinity of this diverges by uh, the limit comparison test. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's try a couple more of these. So again, doing a direct comparison, trying to show that that mass is less than something or greater than something, is going to be a pain because you've got all kinds of stuff going on in the top and bottom. But it's very easy to just look at this. And say that when n gets really big, what is this going to act like? So what's the numerator going to act like? Just the, the n cubed, right? And the denominator is going to act just like n to the seventh. So this whole thing is going to behave like that, which is 1 over n to the fourth. Does that make sense? So that's what you'll compare with. So you do the limit of the series you were given, divided by this, show that that limit turns out to be non-zero. It'll be 1 again. Um, and then you conclude that that series, what's that series? A p series would be equal to 4, so it converges. So then you write all those things out and then make the same conclusion. So write that one out, try to finish it, and I'll give you another one or two here. Yeah, this one maybe will be a little trickier, but let's try it. Three of these, if you can't, I don't expect you to get to the third one before I start working them out. Just in case you're really fast. I have stuff up there for you to keep working on. So I'll give you maybe two or three minutes to try to work these up.
temperature. So on courtesy would I guess since we since it's three plus two and number five. No, it's two the n. Three to the n. Oh it's two to the n. Clear. These are exponentials here, right? Five to the n, three to the n. Oh, I just, I guess I just glanced at it. Yeah, no, it's fine. <clears throat> but you're right. In that case, if, if that was the case, that limit would have been, uh, would have been one, three to the n, or three n plus two n would be five n in the top, right? So the limit would have been one of just the ser uh, the sequences that you would have included divergence. So I'm going to write this one out. If you feel confident, you can keep working on, on these, but I'll write out what you need. So again, with this, we want to say the limit of the series we're interested in divided by the terms of the series we know something about uh, equals something, and again, that just flips that end of the fourth up, right? Should end up with the limit that n goes to infinity of n to the seventh plus three n to the sixth plus five n to the fourth. Okay. And you just multiply by n to the fourth up top. So you just raise all those powers, and now that limit is. No, it's just one. It's just one. N to the seventh, n to the seventh. Those are the biggest powers. That you want. Does that make sense? Again, not zero. The series of one over n to the fourths converges. And again, give some reasoning p series with p equal to four. That's enough. That makes sense. And then one concluding statement. Therefore, uh, the series we're after. So I guess at the beginning, can you actually just look at the exponent? I mean, you're probably, you know, just skip steps, but if you have one over n to the fourth, you can just tell based on the exponent that right. four is greater. Right, right. And so, right. In, in particular, as we get a little bit further along, we're gonna, we're going to do what you're saying. So when you see this one, you're saying it behaves like n cubed over n to the seventh. That's one over n to the fourth. So that's gonna converge. And eventually, we're going to be able to stay that with some. But for right now, I want you to show okay. how that testifies. But yeah, you can kind of see it by inspection. All right, so this one's slightly different than what we worked with before. What happens when n gets big? What's that numerator going to act like? This one. Act like three to the n, right? The bigger one being raised to the n, and the bottom will be act like five to the n. Does that make sense? And so that whole thing is three fifths to the n. And so if I take the sum of three fifths to the n, does that converge or diverge? It converges. Why? Because it's a geometric series with three fifths less than one, right? So that's so we're basically going to do the same thing. We'll just have geometric series in here instead of p series as our So we do, and this one's a little bit uglier. We do the limit still of the right, three to the n plus two to the n over five to the n plus seven divided by. I'm going to leave it in this form. Three to the n over five to the n. Now, if you just flip that over, right? Three to the n times five. I guess we could do it. We do it, I guess. Here's how I would do it. Let me do it the way I would do it. So I would realize when I flip this over, right, I can rewrite it like this. I can make it 3 to the n plus 2 to the n over 5 to the n plus 7, and then over 1 to the 3n, 1 to the 5n. Right? So it's flipping the fraction, but then splitting them up like that. 
And then I think in the numerator and denominator, those slide in and I get, now I get 1 right. plus 2 over 3 to the n. That makes sense. And then 1 plus 7 over 5 to the n. And so the 2 thirds goes to 0, so does the other bit, so the whole thing goes to 1. Does that make sense? And so if you did the algebra differently, that's fine. This is just how I always like to do it. <clears throat> All right. So we end up with that. Um, and so now we, we just make our conclusion. So we say the sum of 3 fifths to the n converges. Again, don't worry about the formal, right? The formal version of a geometric series is a times something to the n minus 1. All you just care about is that you're raising a number to bigger and bigger powers. Those are geometric series. So that's a geometric series with r equal to 3 fifths. And so I can prove this. That makes sense? And then again, same concluding statement. Therefore, the original series converges by the Limit. So again, we'll obviously make use of this to do the homework from this section, but this limit comparison test we're going to keep using throughout the semester, or throughout the, the chapter at least. Uh, okay, last one here for this section. Then. So again, same thing goes through your head. This is, and I, I haven't been stressing it, but this um, theorem only works for positive series, right? And so all of these series we've seen, these are all positive. Um, that's the only time this works. All right, so what is this one going to behave like? Okay, good. So this one, I'll, I'll write it like this, but yeah, you could say n. It's going to act like the square root of n squared, right? And then over n cubed, and so right, that's n over n cubed, which is 1 over n squared. And so we should guess now that it's going to converge, right? It's 1 over the sum of 1 over n squared. Does that make sense? Now the limit is a little uglier here, but let's work through it. Again, we take this guy. Divide by over n squared. Can you guys see over here okay? Yeah, no, I can't. And that camera's okay over here. Okay. So now when you do this, again, you flip it over, and so let's work this out. We haven't done one yet, so just to be, just to be thorough, let's talk about this. I get n cubed plus uh, 4n minus 1, and then I'm going to multiply by, oops, by n squared, right? Divided by 1 over n squared is just the same as multiplying n squared over 1. So now when we do this multiplication, what happens to that n squared when I pull it into the, if I pull it inside the radical, n squared becomes not n squared, but n to the fourth, right? Does that make sense? And then over n cubed plus 4n minus 1. And now I guess we're back to that same point of reasoning this out. Right? This is going to act like this. And now I think this is good enough. right? That's going to behave like the square root of n to the 6, which is n cubed. That's going to behave like n cubed, and so the whole thing will go home. That makes sense? And again, not zero. This sum um, converges p series with p equal to two, right? And uh, therefore, our series, uh, this mess here with the square root, uh, converges by the limit comparison. Okay, so that should do it for for section uh, twelve. Is that three or four? Twelve four.